So in this clip I'm going to work through the chi-square testing example for, of uh, topic 5, uh, testing for categorical relations. So we have two random variables that come from the uh, British, uh, British Crime Survey. Okay, British Crime Survey. Uh, one question is how safe people feel uh, if they walk in the dark and the other question is what ethnicity they come from. And uh, this is a, a collab these are collapsed categories, they are uh, white and non-white. There were a number of non-white categories, um, but we uh, collated them because there are not many, uh, not many responses. As you can see, uh, about 93% answered that they are white and 6.5% uh, that they are uh, non-white. I was actually quite interested in whether that corresponds to the actual population numbers. I quickly checked in uh, the um, not always trusted, but for these sorts of things, possibly quite good Wikipedia. So you can see here um, percentages of different ethnic groups that comes from the census in 2001, so there'll soon be new numbers. And uh, white British was 86, but since we have a white category only, we're possibly going to add both of them. And together they add to about ninety, um, to about ninety-one. Okay, and here we have ninety-three. So that that's not too bad. Anyway, so we, we saw these uh, tables. This is uh, the these are the observed probabilities in here. Okay, the observed probabilities. And I should possibly just say, um, th these of course come from our contingency table that was replicated on slide 3 of our lecture where we have all the uh, ob observed frequency. We'll need this table later again, so I won't copy it here, you, you already know how to get here. So importantly to understand, the red one are the marginal probabil probabilities. Uh, so we have two sets of marginal probability distributions, one for the walk dark variables, so we can see that about 26% feel very safe when walking in the dark, about 11% feel very unsafe. There are four different outcomes here and we call them W1, W2, W3 and W4, these outcomes and these are the probabilities for these. And then we have a second marginal probability. Uh, that is for the ethnicity uh, random variable. So we have two outcomes, E1, E2. E1 is white and as we said about before about 93.5% probability to be white for a randomly drawn um, member of the survey and 6.5% to be non-white. The blue probabilities in here in the middle, these were the joint Probabilities. They were of the type probability that uh, we have a particular outcome for I and a particular outcome for J, uh, for E for ethnicity. Okay. So this is the first important thing. Now, what we do in chi-square testing is we want to test. So this is now the purpose. purpose. We want to test whether the two random variables are we standing for random variables ethnicity ethnicity and walk dark are independent or not. independent or not. Okay, so that is that is the purpose. Uh, what do you mean by independent? Well, that means there's no relation, no relationship between the two. Okay, and if they were not independent, that means there is a relationship. There is a relationship. What does that mean with a relationship? Well, for instance, 
I'm going to say ET, and if at all from the data, and you've seen this from the lecture, uh, this would be the type of relationship we see. For instance, um, if you are non white, you feel less safe. You feel less safe. Okay, so this is uh, the, the potential um, relationship there is. The question is, do the data give us enough information to decide whether such a relationship exists or not? So here we're going to go through the procedure to establish this. The key is to start with the marginal probability. So what we're going to uh, do is the following. We're going to take that table with the observed probability. So I'm just going to co uh, copy it. center bit out. So work yes. Okay. And now we're gonna calculate a new table with new probabilities. Now importantly we're gonna calculate probabilities, joint probabilities. Joint probabilities based on the assumption that the two random variables E and W, okay, that's the two random variables, are independent. Independent. Okay, so we're going to fill this table with these joint probabilities. And then basically what we need to do is we need to compare these to the blue ones here. Importantly, before we go there, we need to uh, do our groundwork again. I'll make a little note here. So in general, and that comes from, ba from the base theorem, So in general, we have the probability of WI and EJ. How is this calculated? Okay, so that's the basic question. And you should recall that the way to calculate uh, to calculate this is as follows. It's the probability of Wi conditional on Ej times the probability of Ej, the marginal probability. So the Wi and the Ej, these are just one combination of an outcome for the walk dark variable and the uh, ethnicity variable. We have eight potential combinations of these, so that could be any of the eight combinations, and we calculate that by the probability of our particular outcome for the walk dark variable conditional on the particular outcome for ethnicity times the, pro the marginal probability for that ethnicity. So that is in general. However, if W and E are independent, Then, okay, and that's very important. That is this if here. Then we can calculate the probability wi and ej as the probability of wi, so the marginal probability of wi times the marginal probability of ej. Okay, that is if 
the two are independent. However, now what we want to calculate is the probability based on the assumption of independence. So this is now exactly the formula we're going to use to complete these probabilities here. So let's start with this value here. Okay, for uh, very safe and white. So what we need to calculate is we need to calculate the marginal probability to be very safe. That's 0.2583 and we need to multiply that with the marginal probability of being right, that's 0 0.9338. So let's do that. 0 0.2583 times 0 0.9338. And what we get is 0 0.2412. Okay, so here we have 0 0.2412. Let's do the next one as well. Let's do this one here, fairly safe and white. So for this one, we need to calculate 0 0.4059 times 0 0.9338, and we get uh, 0.379. Oh, is that right? Let me just try that. 0.4059 times 0.9338. Yeah, 3790. There's a slight rounding um, difference in the lecture notes. That's because in the lecture notes I actually need use not only 0.9338 but more digits. But well, that will not give us any major problem. So 0.3 seven nine oh point three seven nine oh yeah we got so when you calculate that you should get approximately the same very slight rounding errors are always a rounding difference is always possible because I uh, in the lecture notes I, I think I used more precise data or I didn't just use that number, it was possibly 0 0.9338144 something. So well, what does this result uh, mean? Just uh, briefly, let's look at this number, for instance, here. This means that if W and E were independent, we'd expect O point O one seven one or that's equivalent to one point seven one percent of respondents to be non white and feel very safe and feel very safe. Okay, now if we have our sample size, so that's first to understand that, but that understanding leads us straight to the next. Our total sample size is 11622. So, how many would we expect to, feel to fall into that category? Well, it would be out of 11,622, it would be 0.0171. It would be 198.7, which we would expect to be in this category. So let's enter that number, and then I'll just leave that here. Let's enter that into a new table, and uh, we'll have a new table of all our possible outcomes. Let's say W1, 
W2, so I'll use the short forms that I introduced before, and W4, and ethnicity1 and ethnicity2, okay, and we said in this outcome, that was, this one here was W1, and that one was E2, that's E1, we said in this outcome W1 and E2, we would expect, well, that's not what I wanted, we would expect 198.7, so 198.7, that's how many we would expect here. So let's calculate one other precise example, let's say E1 W3, we would expect 20 0.91% of our 11622 to fall into that category. So let's calculate that. That is 0 0.2091 times 11622. That is 2430.2. So 2430.2. And I'll just complete that table um, if the numbers without talking anymore. So please make sure you, under, you you can replicate these numbers. Just to, to remind you, these numbers are slightly, ever so slightly different than the ones in the lecture notes because in the lecture notes I didn't use the rounded probabilities but the precise probabilities. But you should see that they are very only very slightly different and they will not change our final result. So these are now very important, we call expected frequencies expected frequencies and that is expected under the assumption of independence okay that's always important to keep in your mind so what we're now going to do is we will compare the expected frequencies to frequencies under independence with the observed frequencies and the key to understand why this procedure allows us to decide on whether the data are the two random variables are actually independent or not is to understand that if E and W were independent the differences should be small. The differences should be small. Be small. Okay, because these expected frequencies were calculated on the assumption of independence. And also if E and W, oh, quick break for my daughter. Okay, back. So if E and W were in fact dependent, then the differences, uh, then the differences should be big, whatever that means. Okay, so. Let's go back to our table of expected uh, frequencies and as we want to compare them to the observed frequencies we're going to go to our um, the, oh, our lecture slides and we'll just get our table of observed frequencies. Here they are. So the differences expected frequencies, observed frequencies. So for instance in that category W1, E1 we have observed 2856 
and the expect 2803. And in W2, Ivan we observed 4403, but we would expect 4404.7. Okay, so what we now need is some sort of formula. So we have eight differences. But we need to, to distill these eight numbers into one into one number and then we compare that one number against the critical value as discussed in uh, in the lecture notes. So what we know is that this formula looks as follows. Okay, so that's our chi squared test and that is a sum of values, in fact it's the sum of all eight combinations, all eight combinations, combinations, and for each we want to calculate the expected value for the i-th combination minus the observed value of the i-th observation, then we square this and divide by the expected value. So, in our case, we get up here are the expected values because it just moved out. Okay, expected and here observed. So, we have for the first category, let's move across, we have 2803.2 minus 2856. 2856, that's squared, divided by 2803.2, then plus the next category. Let's uh, use this one, W2E1, so expected is 4404.7 minus observed 4403 that squared divided by 4404.7 plus and there are now quite a number of values that category, that category, that, that, that and I'll write the term for the last one down okay that's the uh, W4E2 category expected we have 86 minus observed 94 that squared divided by the expected 86. So we just got to calculate that and uh, then get the uh, solution. Um, if you do that, the result of 27.29. Of course you should again calculate all this yourself to make sure you can get that. It's quite convenient in Excel and at the end I'll actually show you uh, how to do it in Excel. So, um, the question is now, is this number big or is it small? Okay, so this is now, this is now the, the key question. How big would we, you know, what is big enough to conclude that we are not living in this world but rather in this world? And that's why we do a hypothesis test where this E and W being independent, this will become our null hypothesis and E and W being dependent is going to be our alternative hypothesis. And so our this is basically you know step one. This was uh, formulating the hypotheses. In step two, we had to set a significance level, and let's say we set alpha to 0 0.05. Okay, 5%, that's the probability of rejecting a correct null hypothesis, and we need to set this. Then step three is the calculation of the test statistic. We've actually already done that. Okay, that was our step three. We have the test statistic here, that's all good. Actually, it was step three and four because we said we need to formulate the test statistic. That was step three, and uh, step four was the calculation. And step three, we also should say that chi squared. How is that that test statistic? How is that distributed 
that is distributed as a chi-squared with k degrees of freedom if the null hypothesis is true, if H0 is true. Now what is k? Okay, what is our degrees of freedom? We call these degrees of freedom. Um, so in general they are called Decrease of freedom. So here k is equals for this sort of test the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. Here we have, if you look at the table, two rows and four columns. So we'll here have to calculate 2 minus 1 times 4 minus 1 and that of course is 1 times 3. So here k is 3. We're using a chi-square distribution with uh, 3 degrees of freedom. So what does that mean? Uh, let's just go to our table, we're gonna um, get this table across. Okay, so here's our table. That means let me draw a chi square distribution, or at least sketch one. Okay, these distributions look something like this for small numbers of degrees of freedom. So this is the density, this is our chi-square variable, and let's say for that was for k equals 3, and uh, here is 0. So the question is, what is extreme an extreme enough value in this distribution? These are the values you would expect your test statistic to take, and this is the distribution for the values you would expect your test statistic to take if h0 is true if E and W were independent. We decided that we want to use a significance level of 5%. So we want that value here that cuts off 5% of the distribution. We want to know what's the 5% most extreme observations. What do they look like? That means in here we have 0.95. So to get that value we go to our table we find the decrease of freedom, 3, so we are looking at this row in that table, and what, what alpha did we choose? We chose 5%, so we are looking at this value here, 7.815. You can see for different degrees of freedom these values change. So that means that our decision rule is as follows we will reject h0 if chi-squared test, if our chi-squared test is larger than 7.815. So that means we can now go to step 5. The conclusion, step 5, okay. What was our test statistic? Our test statistic was 27.29. 27.29 is clearly larger than 7.815. It's somewhere, you know, we'll have to extend this, this is somewhere here. And therefore we reject H0 as our chi-squared test is larger than 7.815. And we therefore conclude that E, ethnicity, and W, do you feel safe when you walk in the dark, are dependent. So it, matters, it matters what ethnicity you are of uh, for, asking, for answering the question whether you are safe or not. Okay? So this was the whole test procedure from from the lecture.
and you can stop here. However, I'll I'll show you a little extra a little extra bit um, that may help you to understand. If you watch it and you feel what was he on about, just forget about it. But for some people, it may help. Let's ask what I said. Basically, is that we this this distribution here describes the type of values use a different color okay this distribution so the extra bit extra bit so the chi squared distribution with three degrees of freedom described the values we should expect to get for our chi-square test statistic if W and E were independent. Independent. Okay, so we would expect to get values basically with a 95% probability smaller than 7.815 and with 99% probability smaller than 11.345. Okay, so th these are the sort of values we should expect. Our actual test statistic was much bigger, okay, 27 point something. So that meant it was it would have been extremely unlikely to get that sort of value if E and W actually were independent and therefore we rejected the null hypothesis of independence. Let me do the following. I'm going to simulate new data assuming that they were independent. So I'll basically, I want to calculate a chi-square test that falls into that distribution. We'll start on uh, from the following, okay? So here we have our actual, the, the table we used in our example. So let me just delete the joint probabilities. All we are left with is the marginal probabilities, okay? For W and marginal probabilities for W for E. So what I'll do, uh, what I do next is I'll do a little trick. Okay, what I do here, I take is I calculate the cumulative probabilities. You can actually see in the additional lecture notes I did something similar there. Okay. So here, what does that mean? Someone feeling very safe is still 0.258. Uh, someone feeling either very safe or only fairly safe is basically these two probabilities added together. Someone feeling very safe, fairly safe, or a bit unsafe is you know, that probability which you just calculated plus the new probability together. And at the end you always get one, the probability to get any outcomes equal to one. So these are the cumulative marginal probabilities. Why do we need them? So here I've already prepared, we have 11,622 observations like in our example. What I'm now going to do for each of them, I'll determine what their ethnicity is and what their outcome for the walk dark random variable is. And I determine firstly the ethnicity according to this probability. So I'll basically randomly draw a number and um, I want in the end, I want there to be a 93.4% probability that it's going to be a white person and a 6.6% probability that it's non-white. And then I draw the outcome for walk dark, where I wanted to take on this probability, okay? 25%, 26% probability that they feel very safe, 41% probability that they feel fairly safe, and so forth. How do I do that? I need 
and I want to make sure that this is independent the two things are independent remember I want to calculate a test statistic assuming there's independence or that that well independence is true I generate first some random numbers in Excel if you do this uh, equals round and then open and close brackets I'll do that here as well what it will generate is a random number between 0 and 1 and it comes from the uniform distribution so it's sort of you know somewhere between 0 and 1 random uh, with a uniform distribution that means it's as likely to be between 0 and 0 0.1 as it is to be between 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 so if you look at these numbers they're all between 0 and 1 they're sort of evenly distributed across the interval so now how do I decide whether the first object is uh, white or non-white well I use a little if command so if that random number now if that random number is smaller than 0 0.93 then I want a person to be white. So if that one is smaller than 0 0.93, I need to fix that value, then I want the outcome to be 1, which is white, otherwise 2, non-white. So let me just copy this down. And you can see most of the outcomes are 1, but there are a few which are 2. Okay, and let's actually calculate how many are two. So in this little extra bit, you'll also learn a little bit of Excel. Count if, use the count if command, highlight the entire column, and I'll ask how many are equal to two, use the inverted commas, and we find out it's 743. 743 out of 11622 that should now be extremely close to 6.6 percent it's 6.6598 percent and the theoretical probability is 6.6168 okay so we have achieved our aim to approximately follow that distribution you see when actually whenever i enter something in a new field these random numbers will be drawn again okay if I enter a 3 here you get new random numbers and the outcomes change slightly but uh, that doesn't really matter so that was easy now how do we determine whether a uh, person feels safe or not this is now going to be a nested if command just see what I do and then try and understand as I said this is all just extra so here we have our random number if that number is smaller than uh, this number then the person should feel very safe and that's outcome one now if it's larger we don't really know it could be then either fairly safe a bit unsafe or very unsafe so we need another if command here so into the else bit of our if command I'll put another if command so if that number is smaller than this one again I need to fix that oops I should say it's smaller than this one then the outcome should be 2 so we, we only get to that else bit if the number is larger than 2.58 and if it's smaller than this one the outcome should be 2 but we need another if command in here If it is also larger than 0 0.664, we also need if this number is smaller than this one, then we get 3. However, if it's also larger than that number, then we are in that last category, unsafe, and then we want a 4. So, have I fixed all numbers I need? No, this one needs to be fixed, and this one needs to be fixed. So, let's see whether that works. So you can see numbers, all sorts of numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's just confirm that we've done the right thing. Count how many, let's say, 
trees we have. Okay, we have two, five, nine, two threes, and that's this category. We want it to be about 22.4 percent. So let's see that one divided by 11622 is 22.4316%. Okay, again, very similar. So we've managed successfully to randomly draw from this distribution. Okay, that's what we've done. We've random, we randomly drew from this distribution. So what we will need now is a table with observed frequencies. and expected frequencies okay and then from there we will calculate the uh, the chi-squared test so let us firstly calculate the observed frequencies ah uh, sorry the theoretical or expected frequencies so here are our categories how do we calculate the expected frequencies perhaps we should our number of observations is that, 11,622. Now what is the expected drawing probability for that first category? We'll do now two steps in, uh, in one here. We know the observed frequency is the expected joint probability times 11,622. So let's firstly calculate the expected joint probability, that's the marginal probability for very safe, time the marginal probability for uh, white that is 0.2412 that's what we had uh, before but now we want to multiply this with 11622 okay so 2803 that was our um, sorry uh, expected frequency okay so I'll put the observed one here Okay, now we want to copy that. The problem is if we copy that, we'll get nonsensical results because that refers to the wrong cells now. So we'll just manipulate this formula I4. So here we want to fix the row. Okay, M2 here we want to fix the column. And N8, that needs to be fixed full stop. So here we go, and here we go. These are the expected frequencies. If we sum all these values, they should sum to 11622, and they do that. So that's fine. So now the observed frequencies. Here we have all our data. The easiest is to just quickly create a pivot table. By the way, I will put this file up uh, on Blackboard. Pivot table open on a new one, so ethnicity, that was row labels, walk dark, column labels, um, ID, that goes in here, uh, ID count, that's fine, we just want to get rid of the planks. Okay, here are our observed frequencies, refer to a previous video where I talked about these pivot tables. Um, these are the observed frequencies, you see they all add up to 11622, so I copy this and go to our data here, I will paste the values only, okay, so, and here we have byte and non-byte, so these were the observed frequencies, now we need the differences. Let's just first look at the differences. Um, get some headings in there first. So we know what we need is basically expected minus observed. So here are our uh, differences. However, what we need is not just the difference, but let's manipulate the formula to give us exactly what we need. You need the squared difference divided by the expected value, and the expected value is this one. So we need that. And 
and I copy that across just to make sure we calculate the right thing 172 minus 167 squared divided by the expected that's all fine and now our test statistic is the sum of all these terms so here's our test statistic 2.674 now if you go back to our um, distribution table 2.674 that, of course, is now somewhere. I'm going to use the red one. That's somewhere here. Okay, That's exactly where we would expect values. Let's calculate a few more. Let me use, I told you earlier, whenever I enter something in a cell, all the random numbers change, and therefore we get new numbers. Let's just write down what we, the, the value of the test statistic we have, 2.6. 2.67 about okay um, ah, okay now I have to do the I would have to do the um, pivot table again Let, let's leave it you can do this several times fortunately you have to get the, the results the observed ones you have to get them again and again from the pivot table uh, and you have to do the pivot table new so let's uh, not do that Anyway, if you did it, let me just say the following. If you did it several times, you would find out that we would, if you were to mark the, the values on this line, you would get test statistics like this, and here a lot around here, sometimes smaller ones, sometimes larger ones. So basically, the higher the density, the more values you would, you would find. You would basically find draws from this distribution. And for sure, you would not find a value of 27. Okay, that is way too unlikely uh, to occur. And that's how we can conclude that this test statistic of 27, which we got with our actual data, is so unlikely to occur if the two variables were independent that we actually reject the null hypothesis. So that was uh, extra one. Extra one. Let me also give you another extra. Okay, again, this is not necessarily uh, necessary. You can do everything we need without it, but I, it's just a little um, a little trick. And let me just my that's all I wanted. Copy the observed uh, values. These are observed values. Yeah, it just fit in here. Okay, it's the very last bit we're going to do here. Now, remember, we needed to, cal to calculate the test statistic. We need to calculate um, expected frequencies, and we knew the way how we calculated that was the the expected joint probability. But that was, for instance, let's take this value here. Okay. Uh, what to get the expected joint probability assuming independence independence we calculated um, probability of ethnicity one that was the marginal probability for white times the probability of w1 that was the marginal probability for very safe so that was our expected joint probability and then we multiplied this with the number of observations uh, 11622 so let's just see how did we calculate the marginal probability of E1 we calculated that by 10853 divided by the number of observations 622, then probability for uh, W1, that was 3002 divided by 11622, uh, and that multiplied with 11622. So now you can see the only values which will change if we are looking at different cells are really these red values. Okay, they will change if we are looking at expected, fre expected frequencies for different uh, combinations, but this 
this n will always stay the same, number of observations, and these will always stay the same, because we always divide for the marginal probability by the same number. So it means we can actually cancel this one with this one, and what you are left with is the marginal frequency of, the, of E1 times the marginal frequency of W1 divided by 11622. So let's just calculate that. We get uh, 10, 8, 5, 3 times 3, or 2 divided by 11622. So that was 2803.4. And see what we calculated before for expected frequent, the expected frequency. Where did we calculate it? Um, observed here 2803.2. We just calculated to. Where is it the result again here? Yeah. Okay, we calculate 2803.4. That slight difference was because we, we didn't round the marginal probabilities. Um, but you see, you basically get exactly the same value. And let's see whether it works for the other fields as well. For instance, the expected frequency, let's calculate it for the last, very last bit. So how would we calculate it? using our new little rule. So what we need is the, uh, what should I do, I'll use blue, okay. So what we want to do is we take the marginal frequency times marginal frequency divided by 11622. So let's see, so that would be 769 times 1301 uh, divided by 11622, 86.1, and let's see whether that is what we had before, um, 86. Okay, again, slight difference due to rounding. So here we have a new simplified, basically a new simplified formula. It calculates exactly the same, it's just that we cancelled something. The frequency if you want the expected frequency under independence, you take, you multiply the two marginal observed frequencies and divide by the number of observations. Okay, and you always get the right result. And you're, you're not changing the formula, you're just simplifying your calculations. Okay, it's about an hour. This is long enough uh, for me as well. I hope this was useful.